Hey everyone, Abby Kay here, and I am so excited to be able to share a flip through of Apologia Math 5. So this is Exploring Creation with Mathematics Level 5, which is the brand new release from Apologia Math. We have been blessed to have used all the levels now, one through four, and are excited to get to use level five next year. So let's jump right in. Uh, when you purchase math from Apologia, you get a teacher's guide, an answer key, and then the student work text. So let's start with the teacher's guide. I love the way this is laid out. You can tell that the author, Catherine Gomes, is a homeschooler. She was a homeschooler. She works with homeschoolers. She knows what we need. And it is evident in the layout of the program. It is very user-friendly, straight to the point, clear, and easy to follow. So we start with the table of contents and right into the suggested daily and weekly schedule. These are very helpful as a checklist to keep track of what skills need to be practiced to go along with each lesson. So you have your daily lesson and then a skills practice. And that is all laid out for you explained here in the teacher's guide. So we have the introduction, which is absolutely worth the read. The author has such a heart for math and for homeschooling. So this is the overview of the daily skills practice that I showed you in the suggested schedule. So this gives you ideas and tips on what to do. It also talks about the um, optional chapter tests which is new in the last few levels. Uh, the younger grades testing really isn't as um, beneficial, but as the students get older, it's good to have a review, have an evaluation. Um, I like to call tests evaluations in my homeschool because that's exactly what they are. Uh, they're not a test to say you pass or fail and we move on. They are an evaluation to see how well do you grasp and understand and remember the concepts we've worked on? And is there anything that we need to pause and go over again before we move on? Okay. So the teacher's guide will show you um, the introduction to each unit and any information needing, uh, pertaining to that specific unit, some teaching notes, suggestions, especially for the skills being practiced in that unit. And then each lesson will have an answer key and again, any teaching notes that will be helpful. Okay, and then once you get past all of the answer keys, which is again, one for every single lesson with pictures so you know exactly how to um, correct or check your students' work, then you get to move on to the fun stuff, which is all of the activity pages needed. So any lesson that requires a paper or a page to be used in that lesson will be found right here in the teacher's guide and easy to tear out. I love these pages. They are colorful, they are engaging, um, and they make math fun and engaging for the student while um, reinforcing the concepts being taught. A lot of fractions, introducing decimals, multiplication, division, of course, being reviewed and reinforced, geometry, games, lots of ways to use the math skills being taught. Okay, and then at the very back here, we have the, again, optional chapter tests. I like these tests because they are short, to the point, and just really help reinforce, make sure, check in on the skills that have been learned. There's one for every chapter. And then at the very end is the complete supply list. So although it looks a little long because it is a complete supply list, so it even has, um, Let's see, oh, 10 people to survey. 
So it's just truly everything you could need. Uh, pretty much if you have some base 10 blocks, maybe some linking cubes, everything else is household items. Um, I think the only thing that I'd have to, you know, make a point to add to a grocery list would be like the Skittles or the M&Ms for some of the projects, which I have no problem doing. Everybody loves to do math if there's a snack involved. So that's the teacher's guide. Moving on to the student book. This is where I really think this program shines. We love the large spiral binding, easy to use and flip around. I know it's the little things sometimes that can really just be distraction for a student and having um, a book that they can't flip around to write easily in can be um, distracting and something that they have to then think about and deal with. Nobody likes their math book when they have that hump that they have to write over. So I appreciate the binding. Okay, so each unit is going to start with um, a biblical perspective into math. Why? How does math fit into God's creation? I love these unit introductions. They are wonderful, insightful, and beautiful. But I will say that if that is not something you are interested in, they would be very easy to skip over. This is really the only time in the actual workbook where um, biblical themes are discussed. So if that's not something you're interested in, don't let that uh, stop you from checking out this curriculum. So here's the beginning of chapter one, place value and the power of 10. And we get into the lessons. So each lesson, or I should say almost all, most lessons are going to start with some sort of activity to introduce the topic then um, possibly ex more explanation, example problems, and then working into the actual student workbook. One of the things I love most about Apology and Math is how efficient and um, engaging the lessons are. Very colorful, yet not overly distracting. We uh, switched my, uh, my now, or will be, I should say, my will be fifth grader back in second grade to this program from a different math program that had very simple black and white, no frills worksheets. And I can tell you she was literally bored to tears. So switching to something that was a little more colorful um, helped her stay in, stay focused and stay engaged, but it wasn't so much that it was distracting. The other thing that I really appreciate is how simple the practice problems are. I have learned through now, I'm on my fourth student in our homeschool, and I just, I don't see the much benefit, at least for the students, for my students, my children, the benefit of lots and lots of math problems. They're more frustrating, and after a handful of problems, they're not learning anyway. Um, it just brings tears and frustration. So a math program that can have these very effective practice pages with only a handful of problems really um, works for us. It reinforces the skills without exhausting the student. So I'll kind of skip ahead. New chapters, new topics new things to explore in math with lots of pictures, real world explanations, examples, projects. But one thing is don't let the projects intimidate you. They are doable. I've tried so very many math programs and many of them had lots of hands-on activities that just were never going to happen in our homeschool. It just wasn't. But I find these projects to be very doable in a real world, real life homeschool family. And I think one of the reasons is that Catherine Gomes, the author again, is a second generation homeschooler. She was homeschooled herself. She homeschools her children. She teaches math classes in homeschool co-ops and online math classes. She does 
SAT, ACT prep classes. She knows what homeschoolers need and appreciate. All the way here to the end, I would like to show you the very last project because they're usually a lot of fun. Yes, what child doesn't love to discuss their favorite animals? And then a congratulations, you are all done. Oh, we are so, so grateful for this math program. They have turned my very reluctant math child into someone who may not love math as her favorite subject, but certainly enjoys getting to do it with this program. So I thought I'd flip back to the table of contents so that you can get a look at the concepts that are going to be taught this year or in this, in this book. So we start with a review of whole numbers, place value. That is so important. That's the foundation of everything else. If they have an, a good, solid understanding of place value. Fractions then an introduction into decimals, geometry and measurement, then into percents, which I like. Um, I've seen that through the other levels as well, where you might have a more challenging mathematical um, unit broken up with more of the geometry and spatial and visual units, uh, which is very good for students who tend to get a little overwhelmed. Um, this break, helps them come back to um, the next more challenging unit with um, a fresh start. I have found that for my daughter at least. So from percents to graphing, and that finishes up Apologia Level 5.